Who would have thought that a humble hormone, best known for taming blood sugar, would one day throw its hat in the ring as a contender for supremacy in scar treatment? Yes, I'm talking about insulin. The very same molecule that's been quietly policing glucose levels in diabetics for several decades and now making waves as a dark horse in the world of keloids and hypertrophic scars. A couple of years ago, I caught wind of an intriguing conversation in a meeting that I attended. Someone casually mentioned the off-label use of insulin in scar modulation. At first, I thought it was just mere scientific gossip. But something about this gossip rang true. The more I thought about it, the more it made sense. Scientifically, pharmacologically, and dare I say, economically as well. So curiosity didn't just kill the cat. It sparked a clinical interest. And I began to cautiously introduce intralesional insulin treatment in cases where patients either could not tolerate steroids or wanted a gentler, more cost-effective approach. And to my surprise, results started trickling in. Quietly at first, but promising nonetheless. And most recently, I tried two sittings in a stubborn case of chest scar following graft harvesting. And lo and behold, it responded better than expected. Like a grumpy mule suddenly deciding to trot. And I've started offering this treatment to more patients with FUE scars, FUT scars, FUT donor ridging, mild cobblestoning. And with this, my confidence in the use of insulin for scar treatment has grown. And it's not a snake oil. It's not hype. It's just a classic molecule being asked to do something new. And it's doing it rather well. And now let's talk shop. We live in an age where the moment something glows, buzzes or comes out of a laser nozzle, it gets slapped with a heavy price tag and labeled innovative. Yet tucked away in every fridge in every clinic is insulin. A dirt cheap yet well understood drug doing all the right things without the marketing fanfare. Because nobody's going to get rich by using insulin for scar treatment. And it's like discovering that your old Maruti 800 can beat a Tesla in city traffic. Unassuming but efficient nonetheless. In March 2025, just a few months back, a landmark randomized control trial was published in Dermatological Surgery comparing intralesional insulin with botulinum toxin A and steroids in 63 patients aged between 16 to 40 years. And after just four treatments, the insulin group showed an impressive 66.6% .6 reduction in keloid volume, leaving botulinum toxin A gasping at 25.3% and running neck and neck with steroids at 75%. Now talk about a plot twist in the making. Mechanistically, this is not a pie in the sky. Keloids are known to overexpress TGF1 beta and VEGF, leading to fibroblast chaos, collagen overload, and tangled vasculature. Now enter insulin. It dampens TGF1 beta, reigns in VEGF, and stimulates the IGF one receptor, which is basically the accelerator pedal for keloid fibroblasts. And it's not a pharmacological sleight of hand. It's a brilliant repositioning of a well-known drug to directly target the overexpressed IGF-1 receptor and tame keloid fibroblast proliferation. Insulin is walking into scar tissue and making molecular piece one fibroblast at a time. The IGF-1 receptor, by the way, isn't some background extra. It's front and center in over 90% of keloid fibroblasts. And insulin knows just how to dance with it. And compare that with our beloved triamcinolone injections, which does do the heavy lifting in scar volume reduction, but often leaves patients paying the price in skin thinning, pigmentary changes, telangiectasis, and the occasional hormonal roller coaster. It's the classical deal with the devil in scar management. Insulin, on the other hand, has minimal side effects. Just a couple of patients with mild hypoglycemia, which was easily managed. And botulinum toxin A, well, bless its heart, it does try. It has a niche role, softening scars, improving pliability perhaps, but it's not quite packing the punch and it's overpriced. And to borrow a cricket metaphor, using botulinum toxin A to treat keloids is like bringing a tennis racket to a test match polished, pricey, but not quite match ready. Now from a practical standpoint, insulin makes a lot of sense. 
It is inexpensive, globally available, stable in cold chains and already in widespread use. Its safety profile is very well understood. For patients who can't or should not take steroids, those with glaucoma, those who are pregnant or those who have steroid phobia, insulin is a sign of relief. Add to that its potential synergy with silicon gel sheeting or even fractional laser and you got a winning combination. Boost the effect, reduce the dosage and preserve the integrity of the skin. What is there not to like about insulin? And now before we canonize insulin, let's temper our enthusiasm with a dash of realism. This 2025 study was well designed but modest in size. Just 63 patients and a 4 month follow up. For insulin to earn its stripes and maybe a place in clinical guidelines, we need larger multi-center trials, longer observation windows and clever dosage protocols. Biomarker studies to track VEGF, TGF1 beta and collagen profiles would go a long way in solidifying the biological rationale behind using insulin for scar treatment. But make no mistake, insulin isn't just managing glucose anymore. It's rolling up its sleeves and making a solid case for inclusion in scar treatment protocols. Call it a comeback, call it a silent revolution, call it what you will, but don't ignore insulin in scar treatment management. In the end, what we have here is elegant, ethical medicine. No gimmicks, no gold-plated price tags, just a humble hormone getting a second wind in the service of healing. And if that doesn't bring a smile to a surgeon's face, I don't know what else will. So thank you for watching. If you have any question about hair transplant, healing in hair transplant, revision of hair transplants, scar management after hair transplant, do let me know and I'll be happy to answer. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you soonest. Have a nice day and God bless you.